I still love Nobody's Perfect. Me too. I think it might be my fave. And we can't forget. Best I love that of both one. worlds. That's my favorite. <laughs> nah. Then you rock out the show. Nah. I loved that song. And we are back with episode three. Yeah. Do we need to count the episode? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think well, we need to be counting. I know. Anything? But, you know, I'm just loving, I'm just loving being back. We're back, baby. And this week's guests are Samuel L. and Bogey Boy. And Bogey. Wow, boys. They are, they just cannot deal. Like, they're so cute. They need to be in laps or being petted well, that's, all times. That's okay. Okay. So, we'll oblige they're, just gonna, they're just gonna hang with us today. Yeah. So sweet. I know. I was just saying that. Um, sleeping. I got bogey right before the bangers tour. Bangers. Bangers. Which we did a little Google search because we couldn't remember what year bangers was. It's been 10 years. I see. I could have sworn last year we celebrated the 10 year. But I guess not. Well, Google says 2014. Uh, okay. So bogey would be either 10 or 11. Yeah. Still got plenty of years. Plenty left. of years. He's killing yeah. it. And I think Sammy, you know when we got Sammy, is the year we did Cyrus versus Cyrus. Cyrus versus Was that 2017? 16? 16? 17, something like that. Okay. It was around there. Samuel looks like he's in trouble. I uh, know. Wow. <laughs> Sammy. Why don't you lay all the way down, buddy? Uh, I don't know. So Sammy's like maybe seven. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say seven and 11. I did look different on Cyrus versus Cyrus. Crazy different. I know. I know. My hair was really dark when we did that show. Yeah, Like for me, it was dark. I loved Cyrus versus Cyrus. That design mm. was too. It was good. Can't say it was my favorite pastime. Well, it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> it was, but the design was it was really good. Was it? Or if we watched it back now, would we be like, what were we thinking? No, I think it was You good. loved it? I think it was really good. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, one of the last episodes I was talking about helping my friend Adam Sampson uh-huh. redo his house. He is the person that created Cyrus versus Cyrus. And he was just saying how great, especially the one that you won, the kitchen redo we did. Oh, was it the Brentwood house? The Brentwood kitchen. It was really good. I feel like you did a lot to that. Didn't you do some beams in the ceiling? I did and... do some beams. Yeah. That kitchen was sick. It was really. That was a sick house. And that was the one with the man cave, right? Yes. Mike Mike Pine. Mike Pine. The Pines. That's right. I think you can still see Cyrus versus Cyrus somewhere. You can? I know. I'm going to go back and watch it. That is, I do not need to watch that back, but maybe the design was good. I think it was really good. Okay. We'll see. You thing. know what I liked about it is that I feel like most design shows like at, most designers like have a very signature thing that they do. That's true. And kind of looks the same. Mm-hmm. Every single house we did, it was a completely different style. Yeah, it was. I think we killed it. Yeah. R.I.P. That'll never happen again. I know. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> so R. true. R.I.P. to Cyrus versus Cyrus. No. But it was good. It was good at the time. It was good at the time. Yes. It was good at the time. Well, speaking of design... We have quite a few high design questions for today. Right. Because even though we took a break over the summer, the stoners kept sending in their questions, which we love. We love you guys for that. So we have quite a few. We're like a little backed up, you know, but keep sending. Keep sending messages. Yes. Um, Keep sending Dear MTs. Keep sending high designs. But we just want to make sure we get to them all. So we're going to do quite a few today. Okay, great. Should we just like kick things off with some high design? I would love that. I feel like that would be great. And that's on you. Oh, Cuts. that's on me? That's okay. on you. Um, let me. Let me there you Trusty car. Now Samuel's relaxed. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna need my glasses. Tizzle's eyes are. Weren't you gonna do that thing that Gabby did, where you do the one eye? So my friend Gabby, that's not what she did. My friend Gabby did something where they actually almost put like a permanent contact on your eye. Oh gosh. Yeah. And but she literally, like me, needed reading glasses. I know. Not at all. So, so are you going to do it? I don't know. I'm a little scared because I had LASIK years and years and years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just a little bit afraid of it. Okay. But anyway, and I kind of like my glasses. You look good in them. I like these. Yeah. Um, I've been wearing them a lot. 
Yes. Oh, where are they from? Amazon. Amazon. Fourteen ninety nine. We got to bring back baked goods. I mean, we really did. I forgot about that one. Okay, we do need to bring back baked goods. Okay, so hi, Tish and Brandy. My name is Carolyn. I'm calling because I have a question about interior design. I'm a grad student and Boston's very expensive. So I'm trying to decorate my apartment on a budget. I have a lot of furniture, but it feels really dated and just like not really me anymore. So I was wondering if y'all had any suggestions on affordable pieces to find like a new throw, oh, like new throw pillows and drapery, but still keep me on a grad student budget. So throw pillows, drapery. And maybe she needs some furniture. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if Boston has Ikea, but I'm a big Ikea fan. Surely there, you can, I mean, you can get Ikea delivered these days. Yeah, you can. So that's what I do when I need Ikea. Here's the thing about Ikea is if you put it together properly. Yeah. Or have someone put it together. Hire but if you're on If you're on a budget, you're probably not having someone else yeah, yeah, do yeah, it. That's true. But. When you put it together properly, it is so durable. Yeah, I'm and down. It, and the, my other favorite thing about IKEA is you can go on Pinterest mm. and look up IKEA hacks. The hacks are so good. I know. I mean, just changing out hardware yep. on some of the cabinetry. Yep. Or um, or like painting it. Even painting it. I've also seen people take the feet off some of the cabinetry. Oh, yeah. Or ones that don't have feet and add legs that you can get on Amazon mm -hmm. and change out the legs. I actually saw Sarah Sherwin. I always get her name. I always have a hard time with her name. Sarah Sherman Samuels. Is that how you say? Okay. I love her. First of all, she's one of my favorite designers. And in her beautiful home, she has this crazy, cute Ikea um console mm -hmm. and she just changed out the feet to these huge round ball That's feet sick, yeah. and it looks so sick you would think it was like the most expensive piece of furniture so crazy so anyway i love ikea for that and honestly for drapery amazon is so good that's where I got all mine. So when I did the 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 recent judge of my living room before you guys came for Christmas last year, yes, all those and because like my ceilings are so high that the length I needed was so expensive. Everywhere I looked at like Target and stuff, and yeah. sometimes I couldn't even find the length. But the ones I got on Amazon, they weren't that bad, and they were long enough. And you guys came and like Miley was like, "These are so nice," and I was like, "Amma." Are the ones in your bedroom from Amazon? Those are from Target, actually. Okay, because I those love those Target. too. Those were cheaper than the Amazon ones, though. But they're really, honestly, Target or Amazon I have know. great drapery. That is true. That is Throw true. Throw pillows, I'm picky about. I know you are. But I do feel like Target has some really great throw pillows. Mm -hmm. They can still be a little expensive, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But... The thing about super cheap throw pillows is they just feel really flat. I know, or fall apart. And yeah. get gross quick. So throw pillows, uh, definitely Target or Home Goods. I went into Home Goods not that long ago. I think I told you this. I just forget. I forget how good Home Goods is. And I went in there for one freaking thing, and I ended up getting new dishes, <laughs> new cookware. I got um, a, a couple things from, oh, new new laundry hampers. I think that's what I went in for. It was like a laundry hamper. Okay. I got so much freaking shit at Home no, Goods I and know. barely spent any money. And honestly, you can find really good furniture pieces there, too. Yeah, you can. And um, yeah. I actually just got two outdoor rockers from yep. Home Goods. Yep. And they are so cute. I know. And um, I feel like Home Goods is one of those where, like, you can't necessarily go in looking for a specific thing. But if you need a bunch of shit and you know, need to start somewhere, I feel like you go to Home Goods and, like, as long as you go in open minded, yeah. there's usually, like, good stuff. Yep. And they have good rugs, too. Yep. So, do. yeah. Target throw pillows, home good throw rugs pillows. Rugs are a good way to judge it up. And we love Rugs USA. We talk about it all the time. Rugs USA are so inexpensive. Mm -hmm. They have great rugs. But also when they have a sale, their rugs are dirt cheap. Yeah, they really are. So, yep. Okay. So I feel like we, we helped her. I feel like <laughs> Sammy's lost weight. You I think he looks great. Okay, good. He was looking chunky. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, Look they're, they're great. Um, okay, so now I have a pick on my phone. Ooh, Let's see you have the pick? Technology. Look if at I can you, pulling your weight. Hi, Tish and Brandy, love the pod. What would you do with this wall behind my TV? I'm not a huge fan of this blue color and would possibly like to add texture or something. Thanks for always entertaining. Love, Sid. Let me see the pick. Okay, I'm looking at the rest of our walls, and they're, this is a tough one. 
Oh. Because the other walls look like, what, like a creamy, like a beigey color with a white stripe? Yeah, they're striped. And her her wood is very dark hardwood. Oh, it is? Yeah. Because at first I was thinking a wood wall, but I don't know if I like that with the dark wood hardwood. And the staircase is so wood. Oh. Honestly... Were you going to say wallpaper? I love wallpaper. I love wallpaper, too. And it's too. so easy now with the stick and peel or I whatever. Know. Um, Or they do make they do make textured wallpaper, actually. Yeah, they do. Uh, like Susie's brick one, even. But yes. that's expensive. But, like, I'm sure there's cheaper. A textured wallpaper might be sick. I know. The other thing I've seen people do is add, um, like, w- pieces of wood. Like, what are the things? Like, that's normally for it's like, like the a baseboard. baseboards, exactly. Uh-huh. Like the thin pieces that go on top of the, between the baseboard and the floor, and right? to make a frame. And to do something on the wall and then just paint white over it or paint cream over it or something like that. You could do that too. Yeah, that'd be pretty too. Yeah. But definitely I think the blue wall should go because mm-hmm. it just really. It's really it, blue. It's very blue and it really accentuates the TV. Yeah. I think if you're going to have the TV be accentuated like that, like doing a trim around it would be really nice and mm-hmm. then just painting the wall white mm-hmm. like the color of the stripe in that wall yep i agree and then i was thinking or should she paint the wall black and the tv just go no, away not black. no 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 i think yeah, i would I think, close the space in i think much. white yeah and do a trim i mean is that hard to do a trim around the tv no it shouldn't be okay so we're voting white with a little trim yeah. around the tv or textured wallpaper to make it a frame or a textured wallpaper mm-hmm. i think either one would be really good Me too i agree great cute we're killing it Love. and hey guys i never really thought about this until our sponsor good wipes sent us their actual product which i cannot tell you i am literally obsessed with um first of all they're for the restroom after you go number and or number one or whatever you want to do like I don't know they're just but they're made for the restroom they're completely flushable and they smell so good I cannot even tell you and I really did once I got the product and started using it I was like it is weird that we wash our body and everything like with water and soap and we wipe our baby's butts with baby wipes but we don't use anything like that when we get to the bathroom so I have been using these and they are so incredible. I also keep them in my car because they smell so good. So I'll also just use them as like a, a hand wipe in, in the car because they actually smell amazing. And that's because they have rose water, shea cocoa, lavender, cedar, and they have a brand new botanical bliss smell as well. And the best thing is, is you cannot believe how soft they are, but truly they smell so good and you just feel so clean. And I just cannot say enough good things about them. If you want to update your bathroom ritual, you can either go to Kroger, Walmart, Target, go to the toilet paper aisle, and that's where you'll find these. And oh, they're also available on Amazon. So makes it even easier. And again, they have the cutest packaging, this rose color. They have an awful color and emerald. So they look cute in your bathroom. Um, So yeah, Target, Walmart, Kroger, and Amazon in the toilet paper aisle. Good white. All right, y'all. I don't know about you, but when I am home, I really struggle with making decent meals throughout my day. I don't really like to cook and I don't have a lot of free time. Much less like time to go to the grocery store. It just really gets away from me. So having meals that come to my doorstep ready to make are a game changer for me. I have recently been using Home Chef. Uh, If you aren't familiar with Home Chef, they provide fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes that are conveniently delivered. That's right, right to your doorstep. And it just simplifies the entire cooking experience. So whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients or like speedy recipes ready in 30 minutes or less. They truly have something for everybody, whether you're just making food for yourself like me, or maybe you're cooking for an entire family. Plus they have over 30 options a week and they serve uh, an entire variety of dietary needs. It not only is convenient, but it's economical too. And Home Chef customers save an average of 86 bucks per month on groceries. So for a little bit of time, Home Chef is offering our listeners 18 free meals plus free dessert for life. And of course, you get free shipping on your first box. Just go to homechef.com stoned. 
That's homechef.com slash stoned for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. You must be an active subscriber to receive the free dessert. Again, homechef.com slash stoned. Okay, I also have a voicemail. You have a lot of things. I'm so proud of you. Okay, and I'm actually killing it over here. I know. Look at you go. Um, I'm actually coming in. Mom, we were just bragging on you. See, let's start over. I knew it was too good to be true. Oh. Oh. Oh, and now I won't play. <laughs> Hi, Tish Brady. This is Lauren from Iowa. Um, I was actually calling in to Tish for a high design question. Um, I know in the past, Tish, she talked about loving sheets and sheets from uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. And recently, I've been buying a couple of different sheets from, like, TJ Maxx, and I'm so picky about my material, and just want to know what you suggest that is still, you know, a little affordable uh, for bed sheets. So, that'd be great to know, and love the podcast. I always listen on the way to work, like right now, and I'm sorry I'm not stoned because work. Love you guys. Bed sheets, is that what she's saying? Uh, I know, I miss those bed sheets. Bed, bath, and beyond, why? I don't know. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Like, why? Like, why? Like, because nobody were... shops in stores anymore, so I they know, went but under. Don't, can you do bed, bath, online? I wish. Okay. They were the best sheets. That do have... they do bed, bath, online? I think they do. But okay. I don't think they can get those sheets. They were the best sheets ever, and that, but the material I always look for is called sateen. Oh, it's not okay. And first of all, they also discontinued my favorite pillows. The indulgent people. Okay, that's what's in my every bed in my house are those pillows because oh, you picked them out. Yes. And every single person that has ever slept at my house is like, the pillows. And I'm and I'm I like, I think you can I think they still make them and I think you can get them on Amazon. I don't think so. They might not be the exact, exact ones, but the the indulgent, whatever that brand was, uh-huh. they do make pillows that you can get on Amazon. Okay, because the sheets were called Pure Beach Sateen. I know. And they are gone. You they, cannot yeah. get them. And they were so affordable. They were. And so, like, just yummy soft. Um, and honestly, the last few times that I've bought sheets, because I still have a lot of those sheets because I've, and I've had them for so long and, babe, I know. and they've, and they've held up so well, but I'll get them on Amazon and some of the Amazon sheets kind of feel like that. Okay. But the, the material I always look for is called sateen. Okay. Usually if that's the material, it's kind of that between a cotton and a silk almost. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. like the best feeling material and i i will have to put it up for baked goods is um i get the duvets from amazon and honestly like if you really look at them you can kind of tell they're pretty cheap Mm -hmm. but you mean like the duvet inserts no the cover the cover and and the insert okay the last three times i've bought Mm -hmm. duvet covers and inserts i've got them off amazon Mm -hmm. and they aren't the most expensive looking but they are so soft okay so I'll have to figure out which ones they are and put yeah. them up. Yeah, we should put all those up. But, um, yeah. I, uh, I like really bougie sheets. What, what are they? I've been sent so many sheets from, like, brands that, you know, just want a gift or whatnot and sponsors over the years. I've tried them all. My favorites, to the point where, like, I bought some because I loved them so much, are the Cozy Earth sheets. Oh, I feel like you got, you got sent those at one point. Okay. I think they're eucalyptus or something. They're like some some sustainable material, which is awesome. But they feel so good. And I get so hot when I'm sleeping mm. that they're the only ones that are like soft, but don't make me hot. Because okay. Because I don't like that. Like some of those mod, modal or modal, how do you say that? I that don't know. soft, like t-shirty feeling ones like make me so hot. Oh, I, I don't, don't like, like that, that at all. Cozy Earth, I'm telling you guys, the sheets are freaking amazing. Honestly, and I will say sheets. They're pricey though. They're, they're. Even though they are, like, I do feel like sheets, like, they last forever. Good, they last for so long. Right? Like, those ones from Bed Bath that I love for I so know. long, like, mine still are in great shape. Yeah. It's an investment piece. Yes. In, in my, in my, uh, from my perspective, it's one worth making because I like to sleep a lot. Yes, you do. And I sleep every night, you yes. know, for like eight plus hours. That so is true. Worth investing in. So maybe we'll have to put up the Cozy Earth and Just the Amazon. in case you and, guys. But the Amazon the duvet cover, I love it. It's really good. And the insert. It's like the perfect weight. Okay. Okay. That was all mine. Oh. 
congrats. Um, I did great um, with all my technology. Great with all of it. I think I you know, had a hiccup, now but it's do okay. I need to put it on airplane mode. So I would. Um, all right. Well, should we get into some DRMTs? Because we have quite a few of those to catch up on, too. Hey. And we had some people that want to know about a topic that, unfortunately, you are very knowledgeable about. I'm scared. And that is menopause. Oh, boy. Or okay. don't I know that Tizzle is knowledgeable on menopause? Yes, you do. My goodness. Let me hear um, it. Okay. So the first one's actually, uh, there's no video or anything. She just like wrote in. Not that this is. You need some magnesium. Honey, I just took some. Thank God. <laughs> All right. I'm sending a question regarding menopause. Okay. I'm 26 years old, but well, my mother is going through menopause, and I want to help her and guide her. I want her to feel easy, breezy, and free and iconic and beautiful like Tish. Aww. That is so cute. Uh, I am constantly telling her that menopause shouldn't be this bad. Menopause is not talked about enough, and I believe education is key. Uh, I'm sending you both so much love. May God bless you both. You know what? I, it, it's been so long since I freaking went through menopause because I was so young. I, I was know. 42. Ooh, I'm scared for I me. I know. You're getting close. Ma no. Yes. Five whole years Five left. Five years. Um, but then, see, you could be going into perimenopause. No. Yes, you could. I know. Um, but anyway, you know what? I really didn't have hot flashes and stuff like that. I kind of went just through like a midlife crisis. You love being hot though. So maybe you did and you loved it. That's true. <laughs> I hate being cold. But I don't remember anything except just kind of being crazy. You were nuts, mom. I was. You were literally off your rocker. I was just like... It was more like a midlife crisis. Yeah, it was. It, instead of more like really like symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if I can help that much with well, the hot flashes and all of that. I feel like the way we can help is by telling her that when her mom wants to buy uh, an expensive Mercedes convertible that she doesn't really want to maybe talk her out of that. Or when her mom tries to get hair extensions down to her freaking butt crack to maybe discourage that, you I know, do all these things. Uh, things like that, maybe. I mean, I was cruising L.A. in uh, yeah. my Mercedes 500 SL with the top down with the weave like blowing you in the really wind. were. I mean, I was living my best life. No, you weren't. That's well, the thing. Is I, I you know, no. If we looked up photos from that era, I bet I feel like you would look at that and be like, I look terrible. I, I actually, re I kind of remember. You know what I mean? The, the hair was. That's the thing about menopause. I think it convinces you that you're thriving. Oh, I know. My but hair you're not. was literally down to my butt. I could not have been more orange for my spray tan. Seriously. I mean, I was <laughs> mid-life out of control. You really were. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Do you like <laughs> it is time? Do whatever you want to do and have fun doing it. I don't but know. as far as hot flashes and stuff, I don't know about all of that really. Mm -hmm. Um, what but I feel like Bogey's having a hot flash. He's over here like panting to, to death. He's just he's looking his paws, he's good. Okay. Well, I don't think we have I don't know if that was helpful. But you know, we yeah. did our best. And and it goes unfortunately, away. Unfortunately, I don't know about this. I mean, fortunately for me, I don't know about this topic. So no. but Seems like you're head that way, head Shush that direction. It. Shush it. All right, next one. Oh, another doggo. Cute. Another dog? Yeah. Oh, my name's Tori. This is Tunchi. We're both from Louisiana, Baton Rouge. Nice. He doesn't want to be in the video. Uh, we're both from Neither. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We moved out to LA when I was 18 years old. I'm an only child, and it broke my mama's heart. She actually had to move to Vegas to be closer to me because she was like, I cannot do the Baton Rouge to LA commute. Um, so I got married out here pretty young and I got divorced really quick um, with the help of some weed. And honestly, Miley's song, Mother's Daughter, I even got it tattooed because it really just helped me That's get through cute. that time in my life. Y'all's relationship has always been something that has inspired me. Me and my mom are so close. Um, but my question is for Mama Tish, how did you navigate menopause? So my mom's going through it right now. She just got a divorce. She's going a little cray cray. A little cray -cray. As they do. And I want to know if there's anything that your kids did for you that helped the situation <laughs> or maybe something that you wish they would have done. My mom's been my rock my entire life, and I just want to 
properly navigate the situation the best way that I can. Sometimes it's a little exhausting, but I want to know if there's any tips or tricks that your kids did for you or you would have wanted them to. Also, if there's like certain diets or exercises or anything that helped you get through that so I can pass it along to my mom. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Also, my dream would be to go to a Chateau Marmont moment Ooh. and hang out with all of y'all. Awesome. God bless. Thank she's you. She's cute. We have to invite her to the next Chateau. Oh, my God. Show. She is so cute. I'm I love her. I'm obsessed with her. I know. Even though I don't think I can help her mom because I was doing the exact same thing. I was going to say, the problem is I feel like Miley, because she was so young, encouraged all the crazy shit you were doing. I was just getting ready to say. Because Miley was like, this is so fun. I, totally. My mom wants a convertible? Love that for me. Oh, she encouraged My mom all. wants to party? Great. Love that for me. Yeah. No, it. We were having some fun. You guys were all having too much us. fun. Um, no, I, I just, it, menopause is weird. <laughs> I mean, it is just a weird thing. Sounds terrible. Huh? It sounds terrible. I mean, I didn't do the hot flash thing. The only good thing out of it is you don't have to have a period anymore once it's over. It's awesome. That does sound really fucking yeah, nice. Yeah, that is really, really nice. The rest of it. <sighs> uh, yeah, but I'm just like hanging there with your mom. She's just like. It, it will. It does go away. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've I heard it takes years. Does it? Technically, like scientifically, I think yeah. Oh wow! How long know. was it for you? It was a second. I feel like a year, at least. At least. At least a year. Okay. Yeah. Oof. I know. I know. She's so cute. And though. her mom just got a divorce. Oh, that's probably why. <laughs> no, she did. I thought. I thought. And the mom. And the mom did. I think she I said that, that her, the mom got a divorce too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she said it one. is exhausting. But she is the cutest thing ever. Yeah, she's really cute. Yeah. We're going to, next time there's a Chateau show, we, we're going to invite Yeah, because that would cute. be amazing. Yeah. Now everyone's going to call in and be like, I want to go to the Chateau. Okay, so sorry, though. If I don't think we answered that question, I have not been any Well, help. it's your fault, not mine, because I don't, I haven't done I know. it. So that's cool. Okay, Stoner. So something I really need to be better at is staying more hydrated throughout my day. I am on the go, I'm outside riding horses and running around with Astra, and it's rare that I'm drinking enough water, and a lot of times I get headaches from being dehydrated, and I just know I need to do better. So I've recently tried this brand called Peak. They have a sun goddess matcha that gives me sustained energy without jitters, unlike caffeine, which can totally cause crashes. Um, and they've also got a product called BT Fountain, it contains hyaluronic acid and minerals that helps you absorb water more effectively and keeps both your body and your skin hydrated and plump. I am really loving using these products. I would highly recommend them to anybody that's looking for better hydration or more energy throughout the day. It's made with the highest quality and purest ingredients for maximized benefits and bioavailability. So for a limited time, y'all can get up to 20% off the Radiant Skin Duo, which is what I've been using, and you get a free rechargeable frother and glass beaker with this link, peaklife.com slash stoned. It's actually spelled P-I-Q-U-E-L-I-F-E dot -E com slash stoned to get that 20% off of the Radiant Skin Duo. Hope you guys love it. All right, stoners, I want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors this week. It's Vaya, and Vaya is known for their premium, federally legal cannabis products that are your perfect companion. Vaya is farmed and crafted with care in the U.S. and trusted by over half a million customers. Vaya actually is a product for everyone. Whether you're into the premium THCA flower or maybe you're more of a gummy gal like me, Vaya has it all. They're well-renowned for their award-winning THC and THC-free gummies and vapes. They've got soothing topicals, calming drops, and it's all crafted with the highest quality hemp sourced from trusted, independently owned American farmers. The best part is Vaya legally ships to nearly all states of the U.S., and it comes in discreet packaging directly to your door with a worry-free guarantee, no medical card required. So if you're 21 and over, check out the link to Vaya in our description and use the code STONED to receive 15% off. After you purchase, they ask where you heard about them, so please support our show and tell them we sent you. This fall, enhance your everyday with Vaya. Um, okay, next question. 
Atation Brandy, my name is Austin. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I just want to say I started watching Hannah Montana when I was 13. So I'm basically the same age as Miley. And I just want to say I'm a huge fan of your whole family. Trace, Noah, Miley, and you also, Brandy. Um, I used to listen to I Barely Love You Too all the time. That's and so I still cute. do. Um, that song is such a vibe. Um, and yeah, I just want to tell you guys that um, I was like bullied a lot growing up and the thing that got me through it a lot was Miley actually like watching Hannah Montana listening to her albums that stuff got me through the the breakdown that I was having as a teenager um, growing up and I just want to um, let you guys know that um, I also have a question because um, I don't think I've never seen anybody ask you guys this, but what are y'all favorite Hannah Montana songs? Um, it could be from um, season one up into season four of Hannah Montana. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. I hope you guys oh, answer my so question. Cute. And I just want to let you guys know I love y'all and I hope y'all have a great day. Peace out. I'm obsessed with his accent. I cannot even handle it. I love it so much. Okay. Favorite, okay, people, somebody else asked me this kind of recently, and I should know every freaking Hannah Montana song because I was in the band and I had played guitar. I know you were. But I really like, nobody's perfect is always the one that pops into my brain. I was going to say nobody's perfect. Honestly, I love the message in it. It it's is so, so, so good. good. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> I gotta work <laughs> it. <laughs> you live in your what? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Everybody yeah, knows see, it. it's a it's a bar. And you know what? One I really love to um, what was, it, was it called? East Northumberland, huh? Oh, you liked that I one? I loved that song. Okay, I feel like there was one that was always fun to play that I liked. Let's give it a let's give it a look. Was I miss you on one of those? I miss you. Oh. I miss your smile. Oh, it was Molly. Ordinary girl, nobody's perfect. I want to know you. Rock star, that was a good oh, rock one. star was good. If we were a movie, that was a cute. Oh, that one. is cute. One in a million. I think that might be the one that was fun to play on guitar. I think nobody's perfect's the one. Mm -hmm. Life's what you make it. That oh, was a, that I was love, a classic. I was going to try to sing it, but it's not my. Life's key. what you make it, so let's make it rock. <laughs> oh yeah, pretty sure that was the lyric. Oh, we got the party. Which one was the one with the Jonas oh, Brothers? Oh, what? Um, pumping up the party. Was it that one? They're not listed on here. We got the party duet with the Jonas Brothers. That one was always fun to play, obviously, because they were, came out on stage yep. with us, and that was so fun. He said we can go from season one to season four. He is too good. I'm dying. True friend. I remember playing that oh, one. Oh, I used to love that mm -hmm. one. It was so cute with the dancers. Friend. Yeah. There's some there's some bops in there. There are. I still love Nobody's Perfect. Me too. I think it might be my fave. And we can't forget the best I love that of both one. worlds. That's my favorite. <laughs> Nah. Then you rock out the show. Nah. I loved that song. Oh, God. But oh, Nobody's yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, I think that's it. Wait, he asked us something else toward the end. Oh, but my leg's falling asleep. Samuel's going to have to move too. it. <laughs> Samuel's, gonna, Samuel's fat ass is going to have to get off my leg. <laughs> Samuel, I love you. Poor Sammy. You just said he was not waiting. <laughs> well, then I felt how heavy he was, and I take it back. <laughs> Sammy. Did he ask us another question? I thought he I don't did. think. I think he was just saying like Miley really helped him when he was going through the bullying stuff, which fuck those kids. And um then he wanted to talk about the music, I think, right? Okay. That was it. Okay, great. And he was great. Yeah. I loved him. So cute. Okay, next. She's cute too. Hi, Tisha and Brandy. Alyssa from Toronto, Canada here. Um, I just need to say I love you guys. Thank you so much for putting out such awesome episodes every single week. They really bring joy to my life. Um, and you guys are just the coolest and most down to earth ever. So I love that. And I wish we could be BFFs. Um, okay. And my question. I'm getting married in about two weeks on July 13th. Um, and I'm really worried about not being able to stay present in the day. And I've been told that it goes by so quickly and you get pulled in so many different directions. And I want to just hear from you guys, like, how can I stay present? How can I make the day, like, the best that it could possibly be? Um, and yeah, I'm just curious to hear that any of you have any thoughts. So thanks. Love you guys. I think that is true. That. And I was really good, I think, about that, about really. Oh, you were. 
You were really good at that. Wow. No, seriously. I feel like, well, okay. So Dr. Amon says mm-hmm. you're not allowed to get upset until 10 things go wrong. Because any big thing that you're doing, whether it's 10? traveling or I'm just. Gonna have to remind Kirsten of this yeah. throughout her wedding day. <laughs> yeah. Like until the 10th thing goes wrong, uh-huh. like you're just don't get upset. Okay. Um, but anyway, I think like just. Like her even acknowledging that already. Yeah. And good sign. Like it's a good sign that you're going to just kind of take it all in. And I think it's like don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. I mean, things are going to go wrong and you're going to have to deal with some things that aren't, you know, perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think you just roll with it because like enjoy every moment because it only I mean. It's your one big day. It's only going to happen once <laughs> or twice. <laughs> I suck so bad. But well, unfortunately, we missed her wedding. It was in July. I reached out to her and she said it was amazing. She sent me pics. Oh, good. I was, oh like, was going to say, I was going to say she should call back in and tell us how it was. Oh, oh, we have to see. And so nothing went wrong or she didn't see. Great. Where are the pics? Uh, oh, let me see. She's so cute. She's precious. That's loud. Wow, whatever, wherever this is, looks like a friggin' castle. Look how cute. Scroll through. There's three. That is. Amazing. They look great. Ah, oh, I got to zoom. I love her dress. I do too. I do too. I like it. It's kind of like Vaughn, where it was uh-huh. tied at the top and then it goes out like a princess. Yep. So it does look like a castle. Yeah, it's nice. It looks gorgeous. Oh, and look at the car. I know. I saw that. I love that. I love that so much. I love that. Uh, she's so, that is a beautiful wedding. Yep. I like how her hair is just like down and pretty. I know. It's gorgeous. I feel like everyone tries to like put their hair up and crap. Uh, well, I'm so happy for her. That's great. Sorry we missed. Sorry we missed it before giving advice. But it sounds like you had a great time. Exactly. It so looks cute. absolutely stunning. Um, okay, we've got a couple more here. Hey, Turbo Tizzle and Brandy. I'm dead. I just wanted to let y'all know that I have a very small family. So, um, you guys are like the family that I lack. So I really appreciate that. And I was just gonna send you a few questions. Um, where do y'all shoot the podcast? Is it in Tennessee or California? And who helps you edit it? And is someone there behind the camera? Oh, yeah. Let me know. I love this question. It's a good question. It's a great question. Unfortunately for me, we shoot this podcast in California. At my house. At your house. And it's great because I was just saying oh, earlier, so great. I was saying it's so great because it feels like that we're inviting you guys into my home. It does. And I love that. It feels like we're all just hanging out at my house. Mm-hmm. And now that we've kind of done a redo of our set, that it feels even more that way. Yeah, it does. Um, Because this is just literally where we hang a lot. Mm-hmm. We call it the man cave. I don't know why, but, but it. It is. Why is it the Because it has a projector and leather couches. I yeah, don't well, know. I like projectors and leather couches. I know. I don't know why we call it the man cave. Sure but anyway, um, so we shoot it here. I call it the guest house. Okay. Yeah. I've never once called it the man cave, actually, now really? that I think about it. Not one time. Okay, the guest house man cave. Um, and number two, I have no idea who does the edit. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, not me, and that's what's important. I'm not sure who does the edit, but yes, there is there someone is behind. Editor. There is somebody behind the camera named <laughs> Brendan, Baby B. And we call him Baby B because he's so cute because he's a baby. We're gonna have to twenty four. We're, we're gonna have to. We need a, a a whole like little. Can we get everybody a pan? A shot of everybody that's in the room. Okay, okay we're, we're gonna, gonna do it after. It after. It um we have a whole crew it's actually quite nice we do have a whole crew takes a village it does take a village takes a village um you know? so we're gonna have to put everybody's name up and yeah we'll do that and picture yeah at the end and say what everybody does no i feel like they do like to know <laughs> because a lot of times like they're shouting things out and, yeah, yeah, yeah and it's very fun for sure so we're gonna do a pan and put up like producer. Well, Assistant. if we start getting really desperate for guests, we can just pop them in here one by one. Oh, true. 
<laughs> oh my god, we could ask Caddy some good questions. I know Caddy would be spilling some major Caddy, tea. My assistant has all the tea. Caddy has seen some shit. She has seen it. <laughs> She's good. still seeing it. She's still seeing Poor it. Poor thing. Um, yeah, that's but, the, yeah, that's so, how this works. Yeah. If it was just me and Tish, there would be no podcast. Absolutely so, not. Yeah. I always tell Kelsey, like, I want to edit. Uh, uh, I'm always like, I really want to start editing some of this stuff. And <laughs> then she goes, let's, tries to show me how to edit. And I'm like, okay. It's so tedious. Never editing mind. anything. And so not tedious. even tedious. Like, I'm like, there's just absolutely no way I could do that. Zero chance. Yeah, no. Yeah. We leave that. To I'm technically challenged. That we is, know. It's not good. It's not. Um, okay, this one's a voicemail. Okay. Hey, Tish and Brandy. This is Lauren from Iowa. Um, I was just calling because I was been a longtime stoner fan for the, for a while, you know. Um, I was just calling because I was in a relationship for about seven years. Um, and so they, you know, nothing really went wrong, but we just kind of grew apart and we had different outcomes of our futures and um, parted ways and unfortunately since then it's just been a lot of talking stages and yeah not going too well so I was just wondering if you have any advice on how to get back into the game um no I can be extroverted but I think after being broken down so many times that I have built up this wall and now I'm finally in a good place and I just, I don't quite know how to, you know, get out of it. Um, I don't like dating apps. No, I'm stuck in Iowa. <laughs> Midwest, not fun. Um, so if you just have any tips or suggestions for how to kind of get back out there and be able to let your guard down at the right times and moment, be great. Um, sorry I'm not stoned, unfortunately, but I sure as hell am about to be. Love you. I think we had another caller from Iowa. We did. I, I think that's why I was confused at first. Yeah, we did. Iowa, maybe, maybe you guys should get together and hang. The uh, Iowa stoners. Seriously. We'll we'll meet up, you know? I've always said I wanted to go to Iowa. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's where the bridges of you Madison get, County is. You skip Iowa. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have you been? Yeah, it's a whole lot of nothing. I've, I've, I've driven through it. You know who's from Iowa? Who? Sandy Crawford. Yeah. No doubt there's some lovely people there. Yes. But Iowa itself wouldn't be my top to cho choice for tourism. Okay, got it. <laughs> well, for her, seven years is a long time. It is, I wish I knew how old she was. She didn't say. I I'm know. just be curious. Seven years. Um, seven years is a lot. To invest into a relationship that yeah. ends up not working out is so long. It's hard. Yeah. Um, and then I, she said something right after that that I didn't understand. She said, like, something about dating apps, which, here's the thing. I just hate dating apps. But I will say, I feel like there's something to, like, putting yourself out there, even if it's just, like, making a profile and trying to start talking to people on the dating apps. Like, there's just something about, like, that, like, putting yourself out there that I think just propels the momentum forward in a way. Mm -hmm. Kirsten and I talked about that. Because my, best, my bestie Keys, she was on the dating apps and went, was going on so many, like, dates and really putting herself out there. And none of those worked out. But, like, the energy of her putting herself out there, I think, like, helped her. And then she ended up meeting her now fiancé in an airport. Right. You know what I mean? And she was like, it's so crazy. Like, I've been on these dating apps and gone on all these freaking dates. And then he just was right here at the airport, you know? Yeah. But I just think, like, I think she was, was agreed that, like, because she was putting herself out there, she just was, like, in the right energy and mindset to meet somebody, maybe. Right. So I'm not opposed to that. And I, I think the apps are hard, but I do think it's good to start talking to people to, to see, like, what you click with and what you don't and what you want and what you don't. I get that. So it could be, like, a good first step. Yeah. To, like, put yourself and out. And she sounds like she said she's in a great place. Yeah. And maybe maybe she had said that she hadn't been, but that now she is, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. And maybe that is a great first step. Yeah. Um, also, I usually leave the cliches to you, but they all they do say it's, it'll happen when you least expect it. And I will say every guy I've ever dated when I met them, it was like came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Every single one, even when I was like in my early 20s and yep. like they all came out of nowhere when you least expect it, when yeah. you're not looking. So there's something to say for that, too, to, like, maybe don't be, like, looking so much. Exactly. And just, like, let it come to you. I don't know. Easier said than done, but. True. True. <laughs> that was a good question. That was a great question. 
Okay, the last one is a message, just a little text, no name or anything. Okay. I have researched equine therapy and wanted to know your opinion on it since you grew up living with horses. How do you find the relationship between the master and the horse to be healing if you do? Um, Obviously, you guys know I'm such a big horse girl. I've literally been around horses my entire life. Uh, Personally, for me, like, I find them so healing and grounding and... I attribute like every positive personality trait I have, I attribute to like working with horses. I really think it, somebody um, that I met actually last week was like, it was another girl and she's younger than me. And she was like, you're just so confident and so like sure of like everything you say and everything you do. And like, where does that come from? And I was like, it's going to sound crazy, but like working with horses, like it's really given me that confidence in that. Like it's something I've done for so long that I, I'm so confident in my skills and I'm confident about my knowledge and everything. So I've taken the confidence I have with that and tried to apply it to other things like the DJing and things like that. So I don't know, like I think there's people can find like different all kinds of different ways for horses to, to, to be healing and, and grounding in certain ways. But I do know that they use horses a lot for uh, as therapy animals in like prisons, people that have PTSD yeah. or um, for, you know, kids that uh, have have like autism, the, autism. Yeah, the, different. Th- like, there's all sorts of different things. And there's a bunch of places, um, too, that I have friends that will go to these like retreat centers as yes. like adult friends. Like, yeah. go to these retreat centers um, where you like go for a week week and you do like intensive therapy and they have horses there yeah and i just think that there's something very like energetically magical about horses for lack of a better word that they're they're like mirrors you know like they really mirror your emotions really which is really interesting like you should know this because like if you go up to a horse and you're scared that horse automatically doesn't feel safe right and yep. and like you know that because when you get on horses you're scared and yes. you know that and they know that and then like you don't ha- you don't have any control or totally. whatnot um so it's really interesting it really teaches you to be very aware of your emotions because whatever emotion you're feeling the horse picks up on and it's just like a really cool thing that i feel like you get that with other animals like i think dogs can do that but it's just amplified with horses yes. so it's they're really they're really good teachers and they're also just their energy is just really healing I personally think. I do feel like that horses gave you all the confidence that you have. Uh, every, uh, all of it. And like, I also feel like because you did everything yourself with the horses, like mm-hmm. you didn't have your own groomers and right. like you did all of that. Mm-hmm. It just taught you to be so responsible and independent. Yeah. And it really did. Yeah. I even think too, like, Obviously, when people think of horses, they think of riding them. You don't even have to get on a horse to, like, get reap the benefits of this. Like, just being around them and, like, hanging out with them or brushing them or anything. Like, all of it's really therapeutic. And, um, like, you know, my mom's scared to ride. But I do love being around them. Love it. Like, you know, petting them and giving them treats yeah. and stuff. Like, it's re- really great. You don't have to get on them to, like, you know, reap the benefits of being around horses. So I would encourage it. I think it's, like... As as an adult, being introduced to horses can be scary. I think like I have some friends that just didn't grow up around them and they're like, but they're so scary and they're so big they are. and whatever. But I don't know. There's something like about like kind of conquering that fear too and and learning to be around something like that is so powerful. And there is like a mutual respect that the horses kind of give back to you. And it's just a really cool thing. So if you're interested in it at all, I would I would say like give it a try. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that a good question. I love that question. Yeah, really good. That's a lot of DRMTs. We're done. I'm winded. Oh and it's gosh. not even my freaking segment. It went so quick. <laughs> We're changing the name. <laughs> DRMT and BC. It's because I have to, I can't see unless I have I my glasses on see. and then there's a glare and oh, it's just the whole geez. thing. <clears throat> okay, so we are wrapping it up. That's all, folks. That is all we got. That's all we got. And honestly, we have another ep- next week. Oh, yeah. Exciting so good. guest. We're not going to say who. Okay, we'll keep that. We'll Let's keep that, keep one, that a one a secret. But, oh, she's so awesome. Yep. Exciting guest coming up. Yes. Um, and like always, guys, make sure you're, we, you know, we just went through so many Durham teas, so we need some more. Make sure you guys are calling in, sending in. We have a new email address for you guys to send your videos and messages to. It's sorry we're Cyrus at gmail.com. You can send a video, you can send audio, you can just write text, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, and, and we need lots more because we also have tea time with Tish. Well, I was going to say, do you want to tell them about your YouTube yes. steps? So besides the podcast, just to supplement the podcast throughout the week, 
I've been doing a lot of stuff in the interior design space with some of my friends who are either moving or redoing their spaces. And then also, um, we actually just put out there that if you have questions for me, to send them in. And we got so many questions. So we started something called Tea Time with Tish. And it's so much fun. And I love it because there's so many relationship questions. But like, I love all the questions. So keep sending in the questions for that as well. And make sure and go and subscribe. And we will see you guys next week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation and Hopetown Entertainment.